Hey guys, Dan here. Welcome to this video. Today we're going to have a look at this thing here, the AMD 7950X 3D. All right, first of all, thank you very much to Case King for sending over one of these chips here for the benchmarks. In case you didn't know, Case King actually has a lot of sim racing stuff these days. You can get Moza or Azatec, Next Level Sim Racing, Simicube. There's a lot of stuff in their store. If you didn't know, check their website out. So the 7950X3D, what does X3D mean? We do have two chiplets in that chip. One is like the normal 7950X and one has that 3D vertical cache. So think of it like that. You have 64 megabytes of SRAM on top of the 32 megabytes of level three cache on that 3D cache core. And that has a big impact on most games. We're gonna see if this is the case with sim racing as well. We're gonna test iRacing, we're gonna test ACC and Rennsport. And to spoiler you first, the new AMD is the best in all the scenarios that I tested. TDP of the processor is a little lower than the 7950X. We now have 120 instead of 170 watts. And I'll show the charts later, but it is an efficiency monster. I've seen some people being concerned about the two chiplets, like what game uses what chiplet and do I have to do it manually? It's pretty much automatic. I had one case where I had to do it manually, but we'll talk about that later. In general, it's using the Xbox game bar feature to determine whether we have a game running or an application. Okay, so all the benchmarks are done with this PC here. You see in the background, that's a 4090 Founders Edition and then 6000 megahertz CL30 DDR5 RAM. The AM5 platform matured quite a bit uh, with my initial benchmarks of the 7950X. I had some issues with the RAM timings, but that's not the case anymore. So I ran the same timings on the Intel as on the AMD. I also put the 5800X 3D in this benchmark and obviously I used DDR4 RAM there. 3600 megahertz running at CL16. So I did no overclocking on any of the processors. You can definitely get some more performance out of them if you want to, but they were running stock. The only thing that I did was optimize RAM timings for both the DDR5 and the DDR4 memory. I have not tried crazy overclocks like 7800 megahertz plus or something because I don't have the RAM for that. But with the 6000 megahertz kit, I've had zero issues to get the RAM to nice timings using the new Ryzen. But let's hop into the benchmarks. I mean, that's why you're watching the video. So for iRacing, I ran two scenarios, OS to Lab 1, because the start scenario is the one that is the most dependent on CPU. Later in the race, you're typically GPU limited in many scenarios, but at the start with a lot of cars on the screen, this is where the CPU really matters. You probably know the problem, you get like 200 FPS, but at the start, iRacing be like, yeah, how about 30 FPS? So this is really where we need to look at for CPU benchmarks. So first scenario is an ESS race at Spa, lab one, start. And if we look at the 1080p numbers, single screen in this case, we see both the 7950X 3D, the 7950X non-3D and the i9-13900K are pretty similar with the X3D giving the best average FPS and also 1% low with 445 FPS. But it's pretty much perfectly playable with all of these and you don't really notice a big difference between 430 and 445 to be honest. But the X3D is the quickest of the bunch and the 5800X3D being a bit slower still at perfectly playable 372.3 FPS. I've also done the same benchmark for 4K resolution which pretty much shows that we are in a CPU bottleneck here because the average FPS don't drop a lot. We went from 445 to 421 on the X3D and the same loss of performance on all the other processors as well, pretty much. It definitely gets more interesting when we go to triple screen. I've done 1440p for this scenario. I know 1080p is probably the better benchmark for looking at raw CPU performance, but I think somebody that buys a top of the line CPU with a quick graphics card will probably not be on 1080p triple. So I think the most fitting scenario is 1440p triples. So that's why I went with this resolution. And if we look at these numbers, they are overall lower, but it's pretty much the same picture with the X3D topping the charts at 259.5 FPS, followed by the 7950X and the 13900K, and the uh, AM4 X3D processor being the slowest of the bunch, but still pretty much perfectly playable on any of these CPUs. Spa is a pretty easy track on FPS. The next scenario was Long Beach at the start with 60 cars, so it's pretty much the worst scenario ever. I think Long Beach is one of the most taxing tracks for CPU benchmarks because iRacing, for whatever reason, apparently does a lot of rendering of the surroundings on the CPU. That's what I heard. Not exactly sure if that's true, but Long Beach really is the craziest track in terms of CPU bottleneck. As you can see, same resolutions, we are significantly lower at 173.9 FPS average for the 7950X 3D. 
160.7 FPS average for the 13900K, 159.9 very similar on the 7950X, and the 5800X 3D, the slowest of the bunch at 141.2 FPS. If we go to 4K triples, we basically get exactly the same numbers. I mean, we went from 173.9 to 173.8 for the X3D processor. So we can see we are heavily CPU bottlenecked here. The GPU is bored even running at 4K resolution. If we go to 4K triples, it's pretty much unplayable still. But 1080p to 4K single screen, pretty much the same numbers. And then again, 1440p triples, we get a significant drop in performance, not necessarily because the GPU is bottlenecking here, it's because on triple screens you have to render three viewports. If you think about it, you have one monitor where you just look in a straight line, and then you have two monitors that look to the side. And to get that triple screen rendering, we need to like, think of it like three cameras that are rendered at the same time, one looking to the front and two looking to the side. And this is why we see the significant drop in performance here. The 7950X3D still tops the chart at 68.1 with drops into the 40s here. It gets stuttery. It's still playable, but the engine is not very well optimized. Nevertheless, it's still the best of the four processors that I tested, with the 13900K being the second quickest here at 64 FPS average, the 7950X at 61.7 FPS average, and the 5800X 3D at 56.1 FPS average. This is really where it gets a little bit messy. Like at the start with drops into the 40 FPS, it's not really that much fun. You can reduce some settings to get the FPS higher. But yeah, I guess it's time for a more modern engine for iRacing maybe, because yeah, not good. For iRacing, the X3D is the quickest of all the CPUs that I tested, but not by a large margin. It gets significantly different when we go to ACC. Let's have a look at the numbers. And you can see here, it gets really ridiculous. Again, we are at the start because that is the most CPU intensive scenario. We are at Indianapolis, Lab 1, and the 7950X3D gets an average FPS of 240.9, with the second fastest CPU being the 13900K at more than 70 FPS less, scoring 170.1 FPS on average. You can see that ACC really likes the V-Cache because even the 5800X3D is very close to the i9 at 167.4 FPS. And the 7950X without the V-Cache is at 156 FPS. I mean, if you just look at the impact from the V-Cache from 156 to 240.9 FPS, that's absolutely crazy. If we look at the 4K numbers, again, single screen, we do see that we are slowly introducing a GPU bottleneck on ACC because the FPS dropped from 240 to 217.2, still perfectly playable. And again, the 7950X 3D leads the other CPUs by a huge margin. On my benchmark for the 5800X 3D, I found out that the V-Cache seems to not like high resolutions that much. Like the impact it has becomes less significant at higher resolutions, which makes sense because we introduce a GPU bottleneck, but the 7950X 3D is not as sensitive to that as the 5800X 3D. If we look at the triple benchmark for ACC, we see that the 7950X 3D still leads the chart with 149.8 FPS. The difference isn't as crazy anymore, but still 22 FPS difference to the second fastest CPU is quite a lot. And here you can also see that the 5800X3D actually drops off more at triple screen and higher resolutions, but the 7950X3D doesn't do that as much. It's still significantly quicker than all the other processors. So yeah, for ACC, I think, it's pretty clear that this is a monster with a performance difference in some scenarios of over 50% compared to an i9 processor. So that's absolutely crazy. And the last game that I benchmarked is Rennsport. And here we saw an issue because Xbox Game Bar doesn't think that Rennsport is a game. That also confirms it's the most realistic simulation, right? Uh, no, but for real, uh, Rennsport is in beta and Xbox Game Bar doesn't recognize it. So what I had to do is run Process Lasso and basically force the game onto the V-Cache core. So my initial results showed the 13900K topping the charts at 229.8 FPS and then the 7950X and the 7950X 3D pretty much having exactly the same numbers. And then I saw, okay, it's running on the wrong CCD, so I forced it on the V-Cache CCD and then it also topped the i9 not by a big margin with 233.3 compared to 229.8. This is a single screen benchmark at 1440p. Rennsport right now doesn't support triple screens. I can't stretch it on triple screens, but then we don't get the three viewports and that's pretty much a useless benchmark then. 
So for now, Rennsport remains a single screen benchmark. So yeah, as you can see in every single scenario that I tested, the X3D has been the best processor, but at what cost? Let's look at the power numbers and we can see it's actually an efficiency monster. I checked if there's a difference whether the game runs on the CCD0 or CCD1 and there's not really a difference in power consumption. If we look at the numbers, it's 91 or 93 watts compared to the 139 watts for the 13,900K or even 151 watts for the 7950X. It's crazy how AMD gets these numbers with that low power consumption. I've also had some people request that I check the temperature. The 5800X3D seem to run very hot compared to the non-3D cache CPUs. And I kind of can confirm it. If we look at the first two charts, the V-Cache chiplet runs at 63 degrees Celsius and the other chiplet runs at 51. And I tested this by forcing a game on one or the other chiplet. So the other one would be parked. And you can see that the V-Cache chiplet runs significantly hotter if you use it. But still 63 and 51 are low numbers compared to the other two CPUs. The 13900K runs at 71 degrees Celsius and the 7950X at 67. All the CPUs were on a 280 AIO, the Be Quiet Sound Loop 2. But none of these temperatures are actually close to the throttling temperatures because sim racing games, Rennsport was the only game that uses a lot of cores and threads. iRacing pretty much uses one and a half threads for all it's doing. For sim racing, we don't really have a scenario where the temperature limit really becomes an issue. Okay, so to sum it up, the 7950X3D definitely is the best processor for sim racing, but it's also the most expensive one. What about the 7800X3D? I did run a test on iRacing where I turned off the CCD1, the non vcache core, and see what the performance is. And it's pretty much the same. If we look at the chart, we went from 445.2 to 441.1 FPS on average. Obviously, I don't know if the real 7800X3D will perform exactly like that but it's likely. So probably the 7800X3D is the best price performance CPU you can get for sim racing. And if you really want to build a gaming PC and don't want to spend the money on the 7950X3D, maybe wait till April and get the 7800X3D. And another thing I want to add, for whatever reason, I, I can't really see it in the numbers, but for whatever reason, the 7950X3D seems more fluent when you're playing. It's, it's a very subjective thing. Maybe it's in my head, I don't know. But to me, I always seem to recognize when the 7950X3D benchmark was running that the game just seemed smoother overall. I don't know, hard to explain. But yeah, that's it with the review for the new 7950X3D. Next review will be the Mozart H pattern shifter. And after that, let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a review of the new Grid Engineering MPX, very nice steering wheel, or if you want to see a review of the Niam Simtek pedals, load cell at less than 200 euros. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, maybe give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.